Want to hire a trader to trade the Forex market for you and get a good ROI on your capital without fear of abscondment or unauthorized withdrawals from your trader or money manager? For a market that trades around $5 trillion daily in volume, it stands to reason that there are traders profiting from Forex. Otherwise, the Forex market would have become unpopular and faded out. Forex briefcase proprietary trading strategy and risk management techniques have been proven to be profitable over a data set of 5,000 plus real trades, not backtest results. You may be thinking, how do I hire a trader without the risk of trader or money management abscondment, running away with your money? Traditionally, investors transfer a sum of money to the trader's personal account to allow the trader to trade for them. This setup is unregulated and non-transparent, and it's easy for the trader to run away. With our Forex Briefcase MAM Multi-Account Manager setup, investors deposit their funds with a regulated brokerage that adheres to strict rules, such that only the rightful owner of the account can withdraw from the account. This means that Forex Briefcase merely trades for you through a contractual agreement. Forex Briefcase does not have the rights to make any withdrawals. Now you can earn a passive income having Forex Briefcase trade for you while you enjoy the flexibility and security of holding the funds under your own name. Contact us to find out more. Okay, we are back again with uh, another episode of the Currency Call. So today is Wednesday, we'll be doing the currency pound pairs. Um, so welcome to the Forex Trading Asia Daily Currency Call. So, yeah, so this is the webinar where you will get market economic updates, key support resistance levels, trade ideas, and more. This webinar is going to be very beneficial to both the long-term investors and short-term traders. Here, we will, we will be going through what could move prices, possible trade ideas, and also highlighting potential targets and risk. So a disclaimer here, any information shared during this session is not intended to be a trade recommendation. It is solely the opinion and views of the speaker. So please remember to do your own analysis prior to entering any trade. Okay, so uh, just an hour ago, we had the RBNZ monetary policy decision. So today we are gonna have Jin Dao Tai here, founder of LCMS Traders, a multi-million dollar trader trading an account with more than US $14 million on a daily basis. Um, so, Jin, right now I'll pass the time to you to help us break down what happened to the, uh, with the RBNZ monetary policies decision. Jin. Hey, good morning, everyone. So, yes, we did have the Reserve Bank of New Zealand just come out with their rates decision. And quite simply, straightforward is that they have not changed rates they have held it at 0.25 percent um, as we had expected when we spoke about the new zealand dollar and the projections about the new zealand dollar on monday morning but with this interest rate decision it's not so much about that number we always expected it to hold at 0.25 percent but the focus is on the rate statement the rate statement here oops not this one um, the rate statement here coming from the Reserve Bank of New Zealand is the focus back towards 
the main line here is that they agreed to hold the current stimulus settings until it's confident that consumer price inflation or inflation will be sustained at 2% per annum as a midpoint target and that employment is at or above its maximum sustainable level. So with that in mind, it actually comes out as a relatively um, positive note from the Reserve Bank. Also that economic conditions have evolved, um, global growth outlook has improved. It sounds very good. It sounds very good with all that positivity, um, inflation expectations remain at or below the 2% target, but they see it reaching that point so that they can actually um, come towards the point of growth. And also talking about looking to do whatever they can to achieve that target. So with this positivity, with these notes coming from the Reserve Bank, what we actually saw happen in terms of the price, the movements is on the charts here, New Zealand US dollar H4 time frame. Um, when we spoke about it on Monday, I was saying that if it breaks above, we're looking for it to break above 0 0.7062 um, with this news. Look at how it's moved on Monday night when we were trading it down towards 7013. That conversation was also with the anticipation that, you know, at that support level, it was a good buying opportunity back up towards 7062. And with this news now pushing it up along that point, possibly towards 7167. But I think that although we have got good news coming from the Reserve Bank, I think that with the move and that consolidation and that move above resistance right now, um, we possibly will get there, but not in that hurry, not in a big hurry. I think we might actually see now, if you have jumped into that trade, you would be a good 20 pips in profit. If you haven't, then at this point, it might come back down a little bit before we see a gradual move up towards 7167. I think decision points would be at about 7120, another good 30 pips away before you decide, is this move going to continue towards resistance or is it gonna hit that point and consolidate before turning back down again? So quite a number of things to think about, but as a quick summary, good news coming from the Reserve Bank of New Zealand, interest rates held at 0.25%. Um, I think that we might see a sustained move or sustained gradual improvements coming from the New Reserve Bank of New Zealand in the approach and also prices because looking at the data here, inflation rate for New Zealand right now is at 1.4% on a quarterly basis. There is still some move towards 2% and they're looking at 2 point something percent at midpoint level. So we could still see more, you know, actions coming from the Reserve Bank to boost prices, to boost inflation rate a bit higher um, so that we can see that still continuous strength on the New Zealand dollar. Okay, yeah, so um, let's get with the currency focus today, which is the pound, Jin. All right, so looking at the pound dollar, the focus comes back to today. On Wednesday, we look at the pound dollar. What could move prices or what has already moved prices? The pound dollar has had some relative, well, relatively mixed data, right? Why I say it's mixed data? Yesterday, we had um, a whole bunch of power news. Yesterday was Tuesday, we had a whole bunch of power news. GDP number came out at 0.4%. A lot better than previous of minus 2.2, but still missing the target of uh, forecasted 0.6%. GDP year on year going at minus 7.8%. An improvement again, from previous of minus 8.5, but still a little bit worse than they expected of minus 7.3. With all that in mind, 
what we actually saw happen on the pound dollar i'll show you shortly uh, we also had an influence from the us dollar with cpi numbers coming out was for 0.4 percent expected 0.5 month on month us cpi came out at a plus 0.6 percent that actually gave some strength to the us dollar but it was relatively short-lived from this point onwards what can we expect for the pound dollar um, looking at the news that could happen today onwards labor productivity doesn't really move prices that much we don't have much other news that could move prices we have power speaking later tonight or early tomorrow morning so look out for that um, not much else we have retail sales number coming from the us on thursday evening which could look like another good number coming from the us was minus three percent expected 5.9 so you know as people are spending more into the us economy that could actually boost the us dollar a little bit more and then on Friday, we have some pound MPC members speaking, some UK MPC members speaking. Probably not going to do too much at that point. And building permits coming out was 1.72, expected 1.75. If it does come out in that ballpark region, I don't think it's going to push the US dollar significantly higher or lower. So all of this translating into the charts at this point shows the pound dollar on H4 time frame. Zooming it in a little bit, you can see that we saw some good, I'll show it to you on the H1 time frame just to illustrate. We saw the pound dollar gain some strength as the GDP numbers came out. We saw some good news, right? It's not as good as we expected, but a recovery from the previous period. So we saw that good news come around. Right, you can't mute me. Right, so um, can you hear me? Yeah? Am I still muted? No. no. Okay. So we saw that strength come around from the pound dollar because of the GDP number, and then after that we saw that big drop, that big spike below um, that one point three seven two seven support level because of the US CPI numbers. But you know, putting it all together, although we had although we have that recovery coming from the UK in terms of GDP, we have some positivity coming around for the US inflation numbers. We saw that move relatively short-lived below that 1.3727 support level. Again, this is crucial to highlight the importance of having those support levels, support and resistance levels to guide you through you know, possible trading targets and also some price action indicators to tell you if it's outside of Bollinger Band, be careful, things to look out for. So coming back to the projection on the pound dollar H4 time frame, what do we think could happen here with a lack, with a lack of big news drivers coming from the either the UK or from the US? Main thing from the US is the retail sales number. I think that we could see the pound dollar sit at this close to this 1.3778 resistance level, right? Sit at this point, um, I think that we might actually see it retrace back down again. Because of some positivity, because of the possible good news coming from the US, we could actually see it come back down off the 13778 resistance back towards the 13727 support level. This, although is a possible move, I'm probably more tempted. I'm prepared for this back down into this move back down into the range, but I'm looking forward to see if it can break that 13778. It's going to be a lot more exciting if it breaks that point. You could be looking for that upward move, say above 13785. You have a very tight 20 pip stop loss for a good 60 pip take profit towards 13846. That is a bit of a, I would say, unlikely 
or less likely scenario, what could have what is more likely to happen is it will hit that point and retrace back down. You could be looking for selling opportunities as it bounces off that resistance. Very tight stop loss of 20 pips, take profit of about 40 pips. Again, a one is to two risk reward ratio. So approach the pound dollar in this period with a little bit more flexibility. Be ready to take advantage of both the upside or the downside potential. It is sitting at that resistance level with a possible chance of um, big moves on either direction. So looking at the pound dollar with the consolidation before a big breakout of this resistance level, what this means on the euro pound is that, you know, it tried to break the 8651 to head lower. It didn't happen. Right now, I think that I'll update this trade idea and say that it's possibly going to sit at this point before we could see further upside. It looks like it's tested 8651. It looks like it's trying to hit higher. I think that we might actually be looking or be prepared to trade it up towards 8797. Look for buying opportunities above 8700, 20 pip stop loss for a good 80 pip take profit. Very good upside, very good trading opportunities here primarily driven not so much by the pound dollar, but by how the euro dollar is moving. Euro dollar has not moved lower. In fact, it broke above the 1.1920. It looks like it's going to continue climbing towards 1.2053, the resistance of 1.2053. If that does happen and it does sit along that upward trend, then we could see how the euro pound could move along similar to the euro dollar up towards 8797. So a lot of trade ideas, both for the pound dollar, uh, both directions on the pound dollar, the euro dollar getting a bit of a revision and also the euro pound. So remember right now is that markets are a little bit more choppy. Um, you might have to manage your trades a little bit more closely and also approach the market with a little bit more flexibility, be ready to take advantage of you know, short-term downward moves or longer-term upward directions. Okay, yep. So um, thank you, Jin. There are, uh, Daniel there with the analysis in the chat. So if you guys are not joining the webinar by the podcast instead, uh, make sure you guys check out the description for the webinar link. Also, I'm right now I'm just gonna um, I'm going to open the floor for questions. So webinar attendees, if you have any questions, so type it up in the chat. Yeah. Uh, while you guys are thinking of the questions, today we have Jonathan here, partner at Forex Briefcase, to share with you how a Forex Briefcase managed account can help you make money from the Forex market hands, hands free. Okay, Jonathan, to you. Okay, thank you, Jinwei and Jin, okay, for the analysis and introduction. I'm just going to do a quick, uh, very short sharing on Forex Briefcase Managed Account Service. And um, I'm sure the reason why all of you are here, okay, attending our webinars, uh, you know, on a daily basis, on a regular basis, you have one sole objective is to make money from the FX market, okay, whether it is through learning uh, by following up with the analysis that we provide, Okay, or an alternative could be uh, joining our managed account service that Forest Briefcase provide. So um, Forest Briefcase, uh, we provide the managed account service on your accounts. Okay, currently we are about, at about 1,000 clients strong. Okay, and uh, over the world, all over the world. Okay, um, <clears throat> we, we solely manage um, the account for you. Okay, uh, however, all details and uh, access okay is in your own control which means you have your own account uh, you have full control over deposits and withdrawals okay we do not actually hold the money 
Okay, and let me just take you on. You'll be interested to know about our past performance. Okay, uh, over 30 months, okay, or maybe now it's at 31, um, we have achieved a gross ROI of 90%. And uh, we did have a very good performing year in 2019 at 47.41%. Uh, However, although I say it's very good, um, we do perform as well uh, in the other years that is not stated here. I'll come to the detailed results in a bit. Okay, and what that means is uh, over this time, you would uh, kind of expect an average performance of 3% a month. Okay, and the max drawdown in a month that we face so far, okay, is negative two point two four percent. Okay, one of the main objective for this managed account service, okay, other than the upside potential, is actually to carefully and uh, strictly manage our downside risk. Okay, so you will not see um, contrary to uh, what most people believe. Okay, big swings uh, in this. Uh, journey okay but a very gentle and gradual growth with a minimum downside okay just bringing up the chart right here okay um, i would like to divert your attention away from the graph although we see like i mentioned a gradual uptrend a gentle and gradual uptrend we look at the percentages month on month at the bottom table okay um, as much as our our maximum downside so far if you look here during uh last year february okay this was during when around when the covid 19 period started um, i would like also like to highlight that if you notice uh, year on year the number of downside months are also not uh, at a high level okay most of the months we do see um, we are making profits on your account okay uh, with much lesser months that uh, we are in the red and as you can see um, there will be periods where the returns are slightly more uh, at about 1%. Okay. However, this also shows that uh, we do have months where we take a conservative approach okay, and to protect the client's capital. And on other months where the opportunity arises, we do go harder to make very good returns, okay, even 12, 8%, as you see in uh, 2019, and even um, the start of this year where February we had a 6.5% return. Okay, so um, I believe um, Junwei will have put some uh, links in the chat, okay, if you're interested to sign up more, I will not take it too much of your time, okay, we can have a short chat uh, offline, okay, to share with you exactly how the mechanism works, what are the terms and the fees and all that. So look forward to seeing you on board and look forward to speaking to you uh, in more detail face to face. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Jonathan, for sharing. Um, yeah. So I've just posted the link, Forex Briefcase link in the chat. Uh, if you guys want to find out more or contact them, uh, just head over to forexbriefcase.com. Yeah. So uh, we have come to the end of the webinar. Um, and we will see you guys tomorrow for the on Thursday for the Yen and Go uh, analysis. Thank you so much for joining us and see you guys tomorrow. Goodbye.